Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. It's Christian, of course, of Standing Stones Healing, and of course, so honored and grateful to have you here. So thank you so very much. In this week's episode, we're talking about mindset, the importance and power of mindset on our Reiki business journey. And this week actually features a special surprise bonus episode about mindset as well. Yes, indeed, there is just that much to say about mindset. There's also a lot to say about the Reiki Business Summit coming up November 22nd through the 25th. Have you heard about this amazing live online Reiki Business event yet? It's going to be incredible. We have four live days all online of Reiki leaders speaking on all kinds of Reiki business topics, plus the opportunity for small group discussions with other attendees, plus networking opportunities as well. You will not want to miss it. It's going to be an incredible four days of all things Reiki business. So please do join us. You can learn more and save your seat at standingstoneshealing.com slash summit. The link is down below to move your Reiki business forward. So mindset is really one of the most important things on our Reiki business journey. Indeed, you know, it's really oftentimes the most important thing because without a mindset that allows us to weather challenges and trials on our Reiki business journey and that allows us to overcome the challenges and move forward, our Reiki business is simply not going to last. Now, I talk about the importance of mindset in my new book, Reiki Business Ready. That book is right now available for only 99 cents, but I encourage you to grab it now because the price is going to increase. You can learn more and get it on Amazon markets all over the world at standingstoneshealing.com slash ready. Yes, that link is down below too. <laughs> now, of course, there's way more about mindset to say than I talk about in Reiki Business Ready. And indeed, I actually have another book that will be coming out in the future called Build Your Reiki Business Mindset. So there's so much to say about this topic, and we can fill volumes and volumes of books about the importance of mindset on our Reiki business journey. The first thing that I want to say about our mindset is that there is often a mistaken belief that we have to, quote, fix our mindset or, quote, get it right before we can start or should start a Reiki business. Now, I talk about this in the Reiki Business Ready book, but indeed, it is a common misperception that we need to, quote, fix our mindset in order to start a Reiki business. And we can't or shouldn't start a Reiki business until we do things like release our limiting beliefs. As an aside, I do want to say that I'm not a big fan of the term limiting beliefs because I do believe that all beliefs are limited. And so if we have a belief about one particular thing, 
that means that we then don't believe in the opposite of that thing, and therefore that's limiting, right? <laughs> so I do believe that all beliefs are limiting, and I'm actually not a fan of the term limiting beliefs because any belief might, quote, hold us back, even if it's a positive belief like, I can do anything. Well, Maybe that might hold you back too and be limiting you in the recognition of the possibility that maybe you can't do everything. <laughs> but anyway, indeed, we cannot get rid of all of our limiting beliefs before we start a Reiki business. And one of the reasons for this is that, number one, we all have a lot of growing to do. We all have a lot of challenges to overcome. We all have mindset things that come up again and again and again in our lives. And it's also true because on our Reiki business journey, stuff is going to come up that we simply cannot guess at. And so on our Reiki business journey, as we start, build, and grow our Reiki business, we're going to be confronted with mindset stuff. You know, let's say, for instance, that we create a post and someone leaves a negative comment and we feel bad about that. And we think, oh man, ah, this makes me feel really bad and really sad. Um, and that's bringing up, oh, I remember that time when I had to sit all by myself in the cafeteria. Um, true story, by the way. And so we will have our stuff come up through our Reiki business journey, including when not everyone likes us or what we do. So not everyone will like us. Not everyone will like what we do. And I don't just mean outside of the Reiki community. I mean inside the Reiki community too. And so when we're confronted with, you know, people not liking us, maybe not liking our posts, not liking our opinions, maybe they don't like our voice. Maybe uh, we try to do a podcast and people are like, oh, you know, I really just don't like the way your voice sounds. You know, you might be listening to this podcast and thinking, oh, that Christian guy, I just don't like the way his voice sounds. <laughs> if so, sorry. You know, maybe if you're listening on YouTube, um, turn the volume way down and just listen to the, read the closed captions, read the transcript. Um, but because we are going to come across people who don't like us or a client who isn't happy with the service or a student who wants a refund, that can indeed and probably will push our buttons. Something on our Reiki business journey is going to get under our collar, is going to make us uncomfortable, is going to irritate and annoy us, and confront us with some things that maybe it's time to do a little reflection on. You know, for me, for instance, on my Reiki business journey, um, in the past few months, I've had someone on my YouTube channel, like disliking almost every single one of my videos, <laughs> which is not something that has historically happened on my channel. And when it first started happening, you know, one of the things that, 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 stinks about the, the thumbs down button on YouTube is that you don't know why someone is disliking a video. Like maybe they don't like my voice. Maybe they don't like um, the opinions that I had. Maybe they don't like the clothes that I, I'm wearing. It can be, it's, it's completely impossible to say why someone gives a dislike on a video unless they leave a comment. And the truth is no one ever does. And so um, this for me was uh, a, a very curious, like, hmm, why is this happening? Why did that video get a thumbs down? I don't know. But then it kept happening and happening and happening. And I was like, I don't know what the heck is up with this. Is this one particular person? I think this is one like returning viewer. Is this person like 
Someone who keeps coming back to my channel just to give a thumbs down? Is this someone who is trying to tell me their opinion without telling me their opinion and trying to be helpful? I just didn't know. But it started to irk me. <laughs> And even honestly, um, made me second guess every time I uh, posted a video on YouTube. And so my stuff was coming up. My feelings of wanting to be liked, my feelings of not knowing why someone wasn't liking a particular video. What was it about that? I had no idea, no clue. Um, and so I found my stuff coming up through that and the real need to do some reflection on it and to work to push past that hesitancy, because I will say it, it did impact me and made me second guess, um, videos as I was posting. I will also say at this time I wasn't posting and I'm currently not posting as much as I usually do on YouTube because first I was very busy busy working on the Reiki Business Ready book. And then I sustained an eye injury and like couldn't do recording and you wouldn't have wanted to look at my eye on the videos. I probably would have got a lot of dislikes for that. Um, but there have been reasons why I haven't been posting as much on YouTube as I usually do and that I like to. But I will also admit that I had some hesitancy around it too because of the dislikes. And so I'm here to tell you that even when you are an established Reiki business owner and you expect people to not like you, you expect mindset stuff to come up all of the time, it still can make you take a step back when it does. So absolutely know that our mindset on our Reiki business is an ever unfolding journey. It's always something that we need to be managing and indeed managing your mindset. Your mindset really is something to manage. And so I needed to manage those feelings that were coming up of, being worried about being disliked and, oh no, how is this going to affect my channel and the algorithm? And, oh no, is, is, is the stuff I'm putting out actually really not helpful? But it's definitely um, a management kind of thing that happens when the mind stuff, mindset stuff comes up. Another thing that's important with our mindset, in addition to realizing that on some level, all beliefs are limiting and recognizing that not everyone is going to like you or what you do, and not everyone is going to like everything that you do. So maybe you might listen to this podcast episode and think it's great. And then you might listen to another one and think it's terrible. Um, not only those things, and not only will your stuff come up, but another piece of the mindset that's important for us is to not get too comfortable. It's important for us on our Reiki business journey to resist stagnation and to resist comfort. You know, when we get to a point on our Reiki business journey where we get comfortable with what we're doing and we really feel like we're in the flow or we feel like we have um, everything, um, we understand our processes, we have them down, we have our methods and uh, things are just really working for us. You know, we, we know how our sessions flow and everything is just, I don't want to say easy in our Reiki business because there's never a point where everything is easy because challenges always come up, but indeed we feel confident about what we're doing. When we get to this point on our Reiki business journey, it's really easy for us to sit back and get comfortable, but I want to encourage us to resist that desire to kind of kick up our heels and I don't want to say get lazy. It's not about laziness, but rather about getting too comfortable to the point of stagnation, to the point of not doing new things, 
not trying new things, and not experimenting. I really believe that our Reiki business journey is very much an experience of experimentation. And so, you know, we try something, maybe let's say we're having a a challenge uh, bringing in new clients. And so maybe we try something, maybe we try a discount, or maybe we try advertising in a new way, or maybe we try offering um, uh, referral gifts to those who refer, clients who refer their friends to be our clients. With that experimentation, we can try new things. We can see what works and what doesn't. Indeed, we're going to have a lot of things that don't work. So indeed, we are going to do a lot of experimentation in our Reiki business that just simply does not pan out in the way that we might like it to, and that just simply doesn't yield the results that we might like. But we can never know what the results are going to be unless we try the thing, unless we experiment with the discounts or the new way of advertising or the referral program. We can't know how that is going to work or not work unless we give it a try. And if we bring this spirit of experimentation to our Reiki business journey, then when things don't work out, and I say when, not if, because absolutely we all will always have experiments in our Reiki business that don't work or that don't work in the way that we might like them to. When that happens, we can then view it from the standpoint of one of growth and one of um, learning and one of expansion. You know, the scientific method has done a lot of great things for our society. (laughs) And it can do a lot of great things for our Reiki business too. And so if we bring that spirit of experimentation to our Reiki business, that mindset of, I'm going to try this out. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work, I'm open to it not working, and let's see how it goes. If we can bring that mindset to our Reiki business, then we are going to be much better prepared to weather the challenges and to bounce back and have resilience from the things that don't work out well. And we are better able to navigate all of the rocks on our Reiki business path. And so that resisting of the stagnation is going to allow us to move forward with our Reiki business with new and different things. And we never know, we might try something new in our Reiki business and find out that, hmm, I really like that. That was cool. Let's do more of that. Or, ooh, I don't think I'm going to do that again. <laughs> but we don't know if we don't try. And so this mindset piece, I'll talk more about it in the bonus episode uh, this week coming out on Thursday. Um, I'll talk more about it then. But this kind of mindset that resists stagnation, looks at things as experiments, constantly tries new things, recognizes that not everyone is going to like us, and recognizes that our own stuff will come up, our own need for healing and reflection will come up on our Reiki business journey, is indeed a growth mindset. I talk about the growth mindset in the Reiki Business Ready book, and I'll talk about the growth mindset and exactly what that means in the bonus episode this week on mindset. But this is the kind of mindset that is really going to help us to move forward with our Reiki business. And this mindset piece really is essential 
to being a successful Reiki business owner, I do believe it's really the most important thing. I mean, aside from knowing Reiki, of course, you know, we can't have a Reiki business if we don't know Reiki. I mean, yeah, well, technically we kind of could, we can pretend. Let's not do that. (laughs) Of course not. I do not advocate that. Um, But uh, that growth mindset then is just absolutely essential to weathering the storms on our Reiki business journey. I'll tell you all about a recent storm on my Reiki business journey on this week's bonus episode. So what are your tips for Reiki business mindset stuff? What do you think about having a mindset for Reiki business? What are some positive attributes, some things that you focus on for your Reiki business mindset. If you are on YouTube, drop it down below for us in the comments. Let us know. Of course, you're welcome to leave a comment if you are tuning in on your podcast platform as well. And please, as always, join us in the Reiki Business Collective Facebook group and tell us all about it at facebook.com slash groups slash Reiki biz. And of course, as always, I'm sending lots of blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business, and I'm sending lots of blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business mindset. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.